Florida Sports Park. This is a harsh piece of real estate. Be they Terra tires or muck boots, finding solid footing along the edge of the Everglades is anything but easy. Welcome one more time to the edge of the Everglades from Florida Sports Park in Naples as we get ready for round four of the Monster Masters Championship Series, part of the 2023 All-Star Monster Truck Tour. And if you've been following our coverage, you'll know that last night was a rough one for one team out of the state of New York. Buddy Tompkins driving plane crazy. He was dealing with problems. He missed freestyle, had to get that truck fixed. They worked on it into the night. Brighton Robbins, on the other hand, he did not get done until about 6 o'clock this morning. Had to get the truck ready and over to pit party by 11 a.m. They got pretty much no sleep putting Crazy Train back together after a wild freestyle in which he tied Joe Sylvester for the victory. But Joe took the freestyle trophy and the overall win out of yesterday's event. And he remains in the points lead coming into this round four. We will update you on those points. As we go on, the guy who is trying to play spoiler to the spoiler, though, is Corey Snyder in Toxic. While not out of the conversation for the championship, he's got a big hill to climb if he wants to stay up with the likes of tour regulars like the Robbins Brothers or Elliot Miller. We'll keep you updated on all of this when we come back to Florida Sports Park here in Naples. We're going to wrap up the track party, and we'll be back in a moment. This Back Channel Productions program is brought to you in part by Monsters Monthly. Stay up to date with photos, videos, event info, and more at MonstersMonthly.com. And by Crush This. For an inside look at the monster truck phenomenon, check out Crush This, a monster truck podcast. There's only one place in the world you can find this much old school cool. Freedom Racing Monster Trucks. The home of Cyclops and Unnamed and Untamed. Get yourself a limited edition toy at FreedomRacingMT.com. This Back Channel Productions program is brought to you in part by RPM Army, the place to get your motorsports fix. Back on the sands of Florida Sports Park in Naples, and this is swamp sand. It is not beach sand. It's a very different texture here. All the silt and all the muck these guys are going to have to deal with. If you didn't see our coverage last time, you got to go back and check it out. It was wild. Taking a look at the points coming into today's action, and you see Bad Habit with a pretty commanding lead right now over the point series. Toxic 2.0 hanging in there in second place, although he's only got one point up on the... Uh, Early season points leader Triton Robbins in Crazy Train, who is now having to battle back after dealing with mechanical problems that took him out of racing and also cost him a freestyle back in Brooksville, Florida. Something he's trying to rebound from right now, though. We're going to go into the best trick competition. Ten points available to any one of these competitors, and they are ten very important points. If you couldn't tell by how close the points are right now on the board, Elliot Miller out of Ionia, Michigan. Getting things started off with a stoppy. Older style chassis. Things still works very, very well. He and his uh, crew chief farmer, and of course all the uh, great people who help him out up in the state of Michigan. The Perrin family down to enjoy the action. Watching Elliot try to throw down with the rest of the All-Stars here this weekend. This machine, old V-Cradle style truck, still very competitive in the world of monster truck competition. We will see what he has right now as he went all the way over to the other side to make a move for the fans over there. Oh, 
Another stoppy with that open front end, and you can see it turn on him. Still, though, very impressive opening statement for Elliott Miller as uh, he works to get used to a new power plant we've been making reference to throughout the weeks here. Score of five, so solid opening run. We'll have to see if it hangs in there for the lead up next. Buddy Tompkins out of Geneva, Florida. The Sunshine State's own Buddy Tompkins in plain crazy. The big blue Chevrolet out of Rogers, New York. Buddy uh, working on the truck yesterday had some timing and transmission issues. They were underneath uh, getting this thing back together. Let's see what he can do here. I think going for a slab wheelie and the truck did not take the attitude he needed to make it happen. A lot of real estate to cover and this is one of the only competitions where you can really kind of Jockey the truck around, get it lined up. You can kind of think about what you're doing. Up on the nose into a little bit of a moonwalk there. Tompkins trying to raise the bar with Plane Crazy, normally driven by Montana Robbins. Tompkins looking good right now, and that truck has such a different sound to it, the way they tune the blower. Wines going off the track. Let's see, score a six. One point takeover for Tompkins in the Chevrolet. Up next, another Ford bodied vehicle with a big block Chevy in the back. Toxic 2.0 out of Frederick, Maryland being piloted by second generation all-star Corey Snyder. That's what he has been looking for all weekend long. He's had a couple of slap wheelies, but that right there is exactly the attitude he was looking for. And I know Buddy Tompkins is back there beating on that old plane crazy right now. That is what Buddy wanted out of that big Chevrolet. It did not happen. Let's see what Snyder's got here with Toxic. Really gotten known for those slap wheelies. Let's see what he has for his second hit. Lining up, maybe for some two-wheel action. A little stoppy there from him. Something different from the likes of Snyder, trying some new tricks out. We've not seen him try a stoppy in some time. And uh, this truck is really built to be able to do it. It's got the frame rails tucked back inside of the Tigers so you don't run the risk of uh, catching and rolling over. Nicely done though. Here's a look at that slap really from head on. And he opened things up with, that was beautiful, straight up and down, digging up the bottom of the swamp right here and gets down in this muddy area. It's really became his worst enemy during the racing competition yesterday. We'll see if he learned anything from that. But right now, he looks pretty strong trying to knock down a six of Buddy Tompkins. It's a score of eight for Snyder. Toxic 2.0 taking over the lead. Right now in the best trick competition up next. Triton Robin. Guy slated to be a fan favorite and uh, Hopefully, take his lead back that uh, he started so strong in Brooksville and then things have been sort of an up and down road for this guy. For every good run he has, something jumps up and bites him as he heads back into the field here. Let's see what he's got up his sleeve. Stoppy out, no man's land right there. Haven't seen that yet. He was walking around the uh, grounds earlier trying to find something he could pick on, be a little bit different than the rest of the uh, fleet here this weekend. And I haven't really made mention to it yet. You see the big pond out there at center track. They're not allowed to hit the uh, sippy hole jump just yet. Working the track, but it is evident that he has a mechanical problem. The left rear was locked when he was doing that donut. 
and that is the same corner that came off, or one of the two corners, but that's the same rear that uh, came off in freestyle yesterday when he cleared the sippy hole. Right here, though, this was awesome. Something totally different out there in the middle of the pathway there back to the second sippy hole, which there's no jump line today, so no one's going to go after it, hopefully. I don't think anybody wants to try to climb out of that nasty mud on center track. Let's see what the score was. Score of nine by one point. Triton Robbins will take over the lead, and now the big Steve Vance horsepower in the back of the Jeep out of Boardman, Ohio. This is the Kuflaker Auto Group sponsored Bad Habit. Joe Sylvester. Hear the cackle of that big race motor in that thing. VZ Engines building some awesome horsepower in the mud racing and sand drag community. And now for the monster trucks. Sylvester, points leader right now, working the track. It is incredible that with all that cleat, that thing could not find a bite right there on that second hit. Looking for another slap. We had a great one out there at center track as the uh, birds are attacking our end zone camera down here. Joe Sylvester, though, working the crowd right now, trying to hang on to that points lead. He's got a little bit of ground that uh, he could lose without losing that points lead, but that is not his intention. We will see what the score is right now. A seven. So Triton Robbins doing what he needed to do and winning early in the best trick competition that will put him in a tie for second place with Corey Snyder and give him some more points up on Elliott Miller. And you see playing crazy now sitting down there at the bottom of the pack. Joe Sylvester still leading by 15 points. Chuck Plumley working the crowd as we get ready for more action. Racing is coming up when we come back to South Florida. For seven plus decades, the world famous Swamp Buggies have contended with the world famous Sippy Hole here at Florida Sports Park in Naples and the monster trucks have had to contend with it too over the years. They're not gonna do so in racing, but when we get to freestyle, again, if you didn't see last week's edition, you gotta go back and check it out. Right now, looking at the round one bracket, Toxic 2.0 will match up with Crazy Train, and that is a very important battle because they're tied for second right now. Sinistar got the five through the line draw into the next round. He will battle the winner of that matchup. Bad Habit and playing Crazy will duke it out to see who takes on the fast loser in the semifinal round. So it'll be four in this round and four in the second round. As our first two stage up, Snyder looking for a race victory right now. He's not had the success he would have hoped for so far this season. We'll see if he can match with the likes of Trent Robbins. Snyder with the lead out of the first turn, a commanding lead right now as he heads into the 
the final corner. But he gets down into the slot again, and it costs him. Bright Robbins will pick up a win in a handicapped truck. Remember, he had some damage on that machine when he uh, wrapped up his best trick run. You saw that left rear tire lock up when he was doing that donut. Watch it again. He launches to the left when he takes off. It's an indication he still has a broken axle in that thing. Makes a nice tight corner, but he can't really get on the power the way he'd like to the trucks. Pulling Snyder had a commanding lead, but he gets down here in what I've been calling this slurry. It looks dry when you get on top of it. It's darker down here. That's from them cutting through these corners. When you get too far down here, it's like driving in a milkshake. It looks dry on the top. It looks like it might have some bite in it, but if you were to step down into it, it's like quicksand. It's about, oh, I don't know, four or five inches deep, and there's just nothing for these big tires to get a hold of right now as uh, Bad Habit gets ready to match up with Plain Crazy. Here is a look at the finals from yesterday afternoon. And uh, these guys matched up there. Plain Crazy with a good lead, but again, Buddy Tompkins was struggling with mechanical issues. This was the last time he would be on the track yesterday as he had a good run into the second leg. But once they got to that final turn, it was all Joe Sylvester picking up some very important, very valuable points as far as his role in playing spoiler and some uh, points that Buddy Tompkins really would have loved to have gotten a hold of as he will try to rematch him here in Plain Crazy. Remember, they uh, worked all night to get this truck repaired, so we'll see what he can do against the likes of Joe Sylvester. And we've got an issue out here center track. Something's smoking out there. Not sure what that was. You saw Brian Wagner run out and pick something up that was on fire in the middle of the track. Get an update on that, Sylvester. A little bit of a lead in the second leg. A little bottle right there. It's pouring it on in the final leg, but it just was not enough. Sylvester, though, with an interesting run through the second leg. We're going to wait and see if he committed an infraction. The officials right now want to take a look at it because did not totally look centered on that second ramp. Watch him again when he comes around. If he caught a piece of it, watch the right side of his truck. He got knocked over, did check up. It looks like the rears were off of it, but the front did drive up the ramp. You can see his tire tracks there, man. He was so close to a disqualification. And look at Buddy Tompkins trying to pour it on to get to the other end. Here is a look at our semi-final round bracket. Crazy Train will match up with Sinistar again. Elliot Miller through the blind draw, getting the bye into the semifinal round. Bad Habit will rematch. Plain Crazy, your fast loser from round number one. Buddy Tompkins will get one more shot at the big Buckeye Jeep out of Boardman, Ohio. And uh, we've got an update on exactly what caused that fire. Now here is where the actual fire started. Now watch Tompkins' right front tire. He just rolls over something there and it lights up. The word we're getting is he drove over one of the battery packs for one of the drones that's out here. And uh, as they were getting these trucks staged, that thing burst into flames. Those lithium fires get uh, white hot. Luckily we're out here on this sand. They just Kick some sand on you. See, that's exactly what Brian Wagner went out there to do. Picked it up, got it off the track, and we went green. Now, there's one of the uh, many drones of uh, the crew of CJFPV from right here in the Sunshine State. These guys definitely risk some equipment, but we're going to see exactly what happened to the drone right here. Watch Corey Snyder's left front tire right there. It knocks it out of the sky. Snyder was the culprit on that one. He was trying to get a low angle fly underneath of Snyder's truck and it just did not work. Looks like the camera survived. We're going to go on board and watch what happened. Took him right out of the air. And that drone now in pieces in the sand, or it was, it's now back uh, with the uh, video crew back over there on the far side of the track. But heads up to those guys, man. They are. Uh, Definitely risking some very expensive hardware to get those drone shots now as Crazy Train and Sinistar roll out for the first of the semifinal round matchups. We will see if Elliot Miller can maybe take advantage of the crippled 
crazy terrain, although he surprised Corey Snyder, who made a big mistake in that last round. But these guys lined up, probably the two loudest trucks on the premises right now. Joe Sylvester's gonna hate me for saying that because he wants to always have the loudest thing in competition, but uh, you got three guys with zoomies rolling in the Florida Sports Park, and that thunder is definitely echoing through the swamps. Good lead for Miller. Big lead out of the first turn. Robbins not giving up because it works, and Miller almost got EQ'd on that jump there. Final leg, and both of them with trouble. Okay, so Robbins was indeed given an infraction on the run. Even though he slowed down and tried to correct, he did not hit the ramp true. Miller, I don't believe, hit the ramp totally true, but if they both DQ, it's first to the finish line at that point. But uh, we're going to wait and see. I'm not positive whether or not Miller got that ramp legally or not. Watch it again. Final ramp for both these guys. You can see Robbins still launching to the left. Boy, Miller was off center right there too, but he managed to get enough of the ramp to keep it legal. You don't have to be over the barrier, you just have to get all four. Man, he cut it close right there. I'm not sure what the official word was, but uh, it does look like Miller will get that victory and uh, move on into the championship race. As, again, very important to Joe Sylvester to stay on top for these last three events of the uh, Florida Swing because this is the only time he's on tour this year. But Buddy Tompkins needs as many points as he can get right now to help out Montana Robbins for when he gets back into the cockpit of the plain crazy Chevrolet out of New York. So a solid pair of machines on the line right now. This could be the time that Tompkins finally gets a little revenge on the uh, Boardman, Ohio Buckeye Jeep. Let's see. Final matchup of the semi. Great run for Tompkins, Sylvester. Still with the lead, but he's making him work for it. Sylvester absolutely blistering the track right now. He seems unstoppable, and Tompkins We'll have to take the points he's given. I believe he'll pick up uh, either, I believe 15 points for that right there as uh, Sylvester heads back into the pits to get ready for the championship race. We're gonna take care of a few things and be back in just a moment with more action from Naples, Florida. Hey, welcome to Wildman Adventures. Heard the Silver Lake Sand Dragway. There really wasn't any off-roading back then. It was all off-road. We're on our way to Lima, Ohio. That wooden wheel. Oh, it's slippery. Oh, get out of here. Hey, we're here with Rich Cummins. Hey, we're here with Mike Potter. Hey, we're here with Alan Pizzo. we to check it out. This week we're going to go down memory lane. The cackle of big horsepower, the thunder of the championship race coming to the line here at Florida Sports Park in Naples. A lot of black and orange and purple represented on the starting line here this weekend as two of the uh, biggest personalities in monster trucks come to stage and they have battled a couple of times this year but this one could be the most important they have. Elliot Miller and Sinistar worked his way here by uh, virtue of the blind draw and lined him up with Triton Robbins in Crazy Train. Did not have to run in the first round. He knocked out uh, Robbins 
in a uh, wild, somewhat controversial finish there. And then Bad Habit twice has taken out Buddy Tompkins in plain crazy. The crowd definitely ready for action here at Florida Sports Park as Sylvester looking down through the Lexan right now into Elliott Miller's windshield talking a little smack as we'll get ready to settle this on the starting line. The uh, advantage as far as tire choice has to go to Joe Sylvester out of Ohio. With all this sand out here, it is tough to get a bite. Elliot Miller running a set of Chinas in the front and Marchers in the back, so. Uh, got a little more grip in the back of this thing than he does the front. And really needs it to take off, but with the open front end and the uh, close to bald front tires, it's definitely hurting him in the corners. We'll see what he has for Sylvester here. If anything, Miller wants to get him on the light. But, I've been saying it all year long, nobody talks more trash about Elliot Miller's racing abilities than Elliot Miller. Good lead for both with a clear advantage to the team. Miller is in the turn up, so is Joe Sylvester. Both of them with problems. That was a hideous final round. <laughs> I'm not even going to say it was ugly. They were all over the place. In fact, I'm not positive who the winner was there. I believe Sylvester, who finished way ahead, may have picked up an infraction. They meet right there in the middle for one last word. We're going to find out in just a moment who exactly picked up that victory. Both of them. Struggled through the first turn immensely. There you hear it from Chuck Plumley. Joe Sylvester missing the second ramp, costing him a win. Watch it right here. Miller gets hooked on that thing hard. Sylvester just goes over it and did not get himself lined up for that ramp. He did miss that ramp. He had one tire on the ground. And again, he hit that one there too, that freestyle obstacle in the corner. Although that was a legal jump for him, Miller was able to parlay that into a victory. In uh, true Elliott Miller fashion, he's working his way over to talk to Chuck Plumley. What an afternoon of action it has been so far. This is yours, my friend. That's the racing with a trophy. First win on the All-Star Tour. I told you, you're a pure racer at heart. Racing is where you belong. I pulled the van too. That was the worst first turn I've ever seen in Monster Club Racing ever. You still cross the finish line, you didn't give up. These fans didn't give up on you either. You go to victory lane. I don't know what you just said, but that was probably the worst final round race ever. How cool. Medium. <laughs> you have a trophy. You're an all-star. We we don't let you keep it. You got to give it away. These race fans are looking for something for you. Uh, it's true Elliot Miller fashion, but it's a popular victory whether he thinks it is or not. Rowdy crowd here in Naples, Florida as Miller works the uh, crowd here. One fan gets to go home with a trophy and another fan gets to go home with a handful of pop beach balls. So there you have it. Here's a look at the points coming out of racing action. Bad habit maintaining the points lead, although Crazy Train coming up on his heels. 160 points for him as he has now overtaken Toxic by just a couple of points. And it's Sinistar and Plain Crazy rounding out the fourth and fifth positions. Buddy Tompkins trying to work his way back into the conversation. Four points. Looking right down the barrel right now. You see the banner on the back side of that big hill. That is the sippy hole jump. And I'm very interested to see who takes that thing on. One guy who said he's not going to hit it, that's Elliot Miller and Sinistar. That remains to be seen whether he's telling the truth there or not because he also said he wasn't going to take any racing victories this year and he just proved himself wrong. So we'll see what he does here as the uh, 
Big Bad Ford rolls out of Michigan. Waiting to get the go ahead from Stacy Jensen. Talk about a guy that works the crowd as well as anybody, Elliot Miller. Getting ready to put on a show. Really showing the power of that new engine that he's got in the back of that machine as he works all the real estate out there. Look at the black silk fly off of the infield. He just hammered all the camera crew and photographers with sand and rocks, but uh, that's what they get paid for. Miller getting that thing back on the rear tires. That is what that Brian Bartle built chassis was known for. Some awesome slap wheelies. Walking it across the front stretch. Elliot Miller, little old school wheelie walking. Taking this crowd back to 2002 in the Metrodome as he works the South Florida Sands for all they are worth. Gonna wrap it up, Miller zinging the motor as he slides up in front of the wall here over by the sippy hole. Absolutely laying down a shot and really opened this thing up so strong, flying out into the infield. That was absolutely incredible and then he comes down and does it again. This right here though, we saw this from the drone angle. Look at him carry the front end again. That is what those chassis were known for. They're based on the old uh, Dan Patrick, Patrick Enterprises design from way back when, that V cradle, the motor's up high in the back. That thing will wheelie as, as good as any other truck out here, if not better. And you can see him showing it off right here, especially when he did this. Huge slap right there into a walking wheelie, watching it dance on the back tires. Let it simmer up there just a little bit and set it down. Went searching for something else to hit. Let's see, it should be a pretty good score. That was a very strong opening run. An eight on use of course, a seven on momentum, and a seven on the wow factor. Score of 22, so indeed a strong score to open the freestyle. Remember, the best you can do here is a 30, and these points go directly into your overall score. These fans are ready for more now. Buddy Tompkins, Florida's own Buddy Tompkins in the New York-based Plain Crazy. The Empire Flyer, the Chevy Silverado out of Lawton's New York, out of the Buffalo, New York area. See what he has for Elliot Miller.
right now, I'd say the truck definitely seems like it's doing better than it did yesterday. You can see he got down in that stuff that I was talking about. You see how hard it was for him to get back on the power and get him to come back up this way. Finally got that slap wheelie he was looking for, trying to better a 22 laid down by the Ford out of Michigan. The momentum has been awesome so far. He just needs something. He needs that spectacle, that wow move to kind of push this run up just another notch. Something going away on him right there. You could hear it and you could see it. And he's going to take it right off the track, not the way he wanted to end that run. He had a good one going. Plenty of momentum, a good bunch of hang time in there, and some nice slap wheelies he did get out of this truck. You can't take away from him what he was able to do, but that thing still may be suffering from a few mechanical issues. He's going to have to work out, and uh, we'll see him back in Davy Floor. But remember, we're going to be going into a, a tiny arena there. You're not going to be seeing these big, long slap wheelies. Yusuf, of course, though, was an eight. A seven on momentum, a five on wow factor. And that does end up hurting him by two points. He falls to Elliot Miller, a 20 for Buddy Tompkins and Plain Crazy out of Geneva, Florida. Right now, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, the guy who's got a score to settle with this track comes to the line. Stay with us. You hear the big black and green Ford power up here at Florida Sports Park in Naples as the uh, action getting late in the day right now. Corey Snyder in Toxic 2.0. This guy has a major score to settle with this legendary facility as uh, last year he was the only guy who attempted the sippy hole jump and uh, did not get over it, landed smack in the middle of it. In fact, they were pulling wildlife out of the headers for a few days as they worked to clean this machine out. He had a lot of nasty muck up in that cab with him as it went right for the hole up into the driver's compartment, right between the windshield and the hood, and right into Corey Snyder's lap. We'll see if he takes on that sippy hole today. Hear the guttural thump of that big Chevrolet engine. Engine rebuilt by uh, Kevin Stauffer out of Waynesboro, Pennsylvania, trying to get these guys enough horsepower to clear big jumps like that. As Snyder just warms them up here.
Keep in mind, he did take on the sippy hole out at center track. There's a second smaller jump out there, and it's still not an easy one. And that one uh, almost saw the end of Toxic for the weekend as he did a, a nose-high leap across that one when the ramp collapsed. But there's no ramp over there today, as you see, as he goes past it. So if he wants that big air, he is going to have to take on the big sippy hole out here at the front stretch. And it looks like he is headed there right now. The crowd coming to their feet to watch this. Can Corey Snyder gain a little revenge on Florida Sports Park? With room to spare, he sure can. Toxic 2.0 clears the sippy hole and motors on here in Naples, Florida. What a shot for the big Ford from Maryland, although something does not quite sound right. He may have done some damage when he landed. He set that up, he knew. That could either be the breakover point in this freestyle where he took off and just did whatever he wanted, or that could have been the end of the truck. It looks like the truck survived, but something internally went away. It's a lot of hang time. Look at him plant the rear end when he comes over. And again, cleared it with room to spare. Nowhere near the water that time. He wanted to make sure he did not land in that gunk down there. some great shots gleaming in the sunlight Snyder taking over the lead by four points and he knows that he is in a bit of a vulnerable position right now because the guy who just took over the number two spot in the point series from Snyder is rolling out Triton Robbins in Crazy Train. He had the move of the season so far. It's not the move he was hoping it would be. But he definitely made the highlight reel for years to come of the wildest finishes to a freestyle we've ever seen on the All-Star Monster Truck Tour as he gets ready to throw down right here. And back there working on it, we'll see if that axle will hang in there or if he's still having mechanical problems. Looks like he's got drive off that left rear corner now. Something is going away again. It looks like... Trying to watch the rooster tails when he goes across the field there. It looks like that left rear may not be pulling again. And I'm not sure what, if anything, they actually did back there. If it just looked like he was pulling. But he's definitely getting a bad kick right now. There is no way he's going to be able to tackle a jump like the sippy hole with the truck in that condition. In fact, he's going to wrap up the run, and you know no one is more disappointed right now than the guy at the wheel of the crazy train. As he motors back to the pit area, he was ready to lay it down, but something just does not want to hold up in the back of that truck right now. Looked like it was under power early in the run, but right here was a telltale when it launched. And it kicked him like this as a clear indication he's not getting drive off of one side of that truck. And it looks like the left rear has failed him again. Remember, 
It's a miracle that thing's even back here because he tore that left rear off. But a six, a six, and a four is only going to net him a 16. And I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, that is enough for Corey Snyder to jump over Triton Robbins back into the number two spot. But Joe Sylvester, who came into this thing with the points lead, is not looking to leave here without the points lead. He would love to say he dominated the Florida swing and he is going to start with the biggest obstacle on the track. Joe Sylvester gets ready to tackle the Sippy Hall here at Florida Sports Park as Bad Habit heads out for freestyle. Also with room to spare, but he has snapped the front tie rod. In fact, it looks like the Heim is still hung up there on the uh, knuckle. Rip the bun clean out of the uh, tie rod. And there is no way with what he just did, he's going to be able to go into the lead. In fact, the score that he just posted has officially knocked him out of the top spot. So Joe Sylvester will be rolling on into Davie, Florida in the number two spot. Watch this one more time as Sylvester, again, beautiful shot. He clears the sippy hole. He comes down heavy on the nose, and it was just time for that to let go. The fatigue factor may have taken over because he has been beating the snot out of that big Jeep all season long for uh, three events straight and it finally just found a weak link and it was the uh, the uh, Heim where the weld actually where the bung meets up with the uh, end of that tie rod you can see they shut him down right quick he wouldn't have been able to get around the track anyway but a one point advantage for Toxic 2.0 heading into Davie Florida it's not much but it's meaningful right now in a world where Joe Sylvester had been dominant, especially down here in front of his family. That is not the finish he was hoping for. Crazy Train, Sinistar, and Plain Crazy round out the top five field right now. Remember, we'll see some other names. And there you see exactly what broke. The end came right out of the tie rod, the Heim, and, uh, and the end of the tie rod still connected to the knuckle. What a weekend of action it has been here in Naples, Florida. Again, if you didn't see last... Uh, last night's coverage, go back and check it out. It was one of the wildest shows we have ever been a part of. Thank you for joining us. We're not done from here in Florida. Next time, we head indoors down at Davie. Don't miss it.